this is my blood work on what was supposed to be 16, yeah, nanograms per milliliter, 16 IUs, the equivalent of 16 IUs of genotropin a day. My name's Chase Irons. I have a YouTube channel where I talk about how to do this stuff as healthy as possible. And I am an avid steroid user. <laughs> For the past two weeks, with regards to growth hormone and the new Pfizer Genla pens, I have been doing one full Genla pen every other day for the past uh, for the past two weeks at this point. And I got blood work on this last Friday, and I got blood work the Friday before to see. Uh, what the numbers on that were going to look like. So I guess we can go ahead and get down into um, the nitty gritty on my results and review on the um, Genla pens. Um, so when I first started this uh, experiment to test it all out, I started off with one Genla pen a week. The first week I did one pen on Sunday, on a Sunday, which was, which was uh, four weeks ago, and did one pen, and I was like, okay, let's wait until Friday, and we're going to get a serum HGH test done and see you know, where we're at, see, see what it looks like. Um, so five days after pinning a, a full pen. Uh, something else worth noting for those of you that don't know, is if you take the pen and you stick an insulin needle in the tip and draw out all of the fluid, you end up pulling out 1.5 milliliters. So there, on, on the pen, it says that there are, uh, there's 72 IUs, I believe, 72 IUs per, yeah, per 1.2 milliliters. Now, because there's 1.5 milliliters in the actual pen, that means there's actually 90 IUs in one pen of 72 IU or the 24 milligram Genla pens. So that's uh, that's pretty nice that there's actually 90 IUs in there. Now, if you, if you um, go off of Pfizer's website and do the conversion of Genla IUs to genotropin IUs, because they are not equal according to Pfizer's official website. They are not equal. And I, I will agree with that, that they are not completely equal. Um, what it says, what when you do the math according to Pfizer's main webpage for um, Genla, it says that they saw they saw basically the same result in the kids that they were testing this on they saw the same result with a difference of 2.77 IUs of ingenla is equal to 1 IU of genotropin okay so it's not like you're actually getting 90 IUs of real growth hormone in a full pen. Now that's pretty disappointing uh, to say the least, because that's gonna fool a lot of people. A lot of people that don't watch this, that's going to trick a lot of people. People are gonna buy a pen and they're gonna think, wow, this is super cheap. It's $200 for 90 IUs or, or, or $200 for even 70, uh, 72 IUs. Like that's a great deal or, or whatever you can get it for, you know, like it depends. A lot of it depends on like how many pens you buy, you know, if you do like a bulk um, discount or something like that. But in general, like $200 for 72 IUs, like that's fucking awesome. Yeah, it doesn't work out to be that way. According to Pfizer's website, it ends up being, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find the exact page. Okay, so this is Pfizer's website. This is kind of what a lot of people are going off of for this, you know, conversion of, um, 
all of it. So like if you look at this, they say a weekly dose of, of Genla at 0.66 milligrams per kilogram is is basically equal to a daily dose of somatropin, which would be genotropin at 0 0.034 milligrams per uh, kilogram. So if you do the math on that, um, you know, if you do 0.66 divided by seven, 0.66 divided by seven, that's gonna give you uh, 0 0.094, okay? Daily Genla is, is equivalent to 0 0.034 genotropin. So if you divide those two, it ends up coming out to point, point 0.034 goes into 0 0.094 2.77 times. So that means that according to Pfizer, the way that they dosed it to the kids is that one IU of genotropin was replaced with 2.77 IUs of Ingenla. So that's what I was going off of initially when I was doing this whole game plan, okay? Um, anyway, so as I was going, as I was saying, first week I did one IU or, or I did one pen on a Sunday. Friday I got blood work done, expecting to see something on my GH serum test. It basically came back at nothing, which told me that okay, this does not last five days. It doesn't last five days. It doesn't last a week. So I was like, okay, well that that is a little misleading because a lot of people are also going to think like, okay, I can, I only have to inject this once a week and it's going to spread it out across the entire week. That's not true as well. Okay. So that, that doesn't work out that way. The IUs on the pen do not work out that way. All right. So the second week, the second week I did two pens on Sunday and I waited until uh, uh, I, I waited until Wednesday to go get blood work done. So I went in Wednesday to get my blood drawn and the system for LabCorp was down at my local place and I could not get blood drawn. <laughs> and in that, that kind of blew that fucking week. So <laughs> week two was a bust. So at that point, I was still kind of like, you know what, I'm, I'm not really noticing a whole lot like I, I did see my weight kind of start creeping up um, even week one I saw my weight change like it, it kind of went up a couple pounds then the second week I went up about three pounds in weight even though I was not trying to gain weight you know my diet was still on point I was still trying to drop weight I was still trying to diet my weights kind of climbed up a few pounds so after like two weeks I was up five pounds from about to what was I? I was like two, 237 to 240. I climbed up to about 245. And so then at that point, I was like, you know what, let's let's just screw this. Let's dose this every other day. Because my my third week, my game plan was to do three pens a week and see what's going on. So I was like, you know what, let's just do a pen every other day. That's going to be 3.5 pens a week, essentially. Um, and according to the 2.77 IU per one, going off of 90 IUs per pen, that should equal about 16 IUs per day as the equivalent to um, genotropin. So it's kind of what I was trying to work up to anyway. So I was like, okay, so let's do, let's, let's, let's just do this 16 IUs a day equivalent according to this whole thing. So I did that from, I, I think I started that like after I realized like I couldn't get the blood test. So like the next day I started that um, and ran that. So I got a week and a half in on that. And then, so last Friday got blood work done pulled the HGH serum test of doing one pen every other day for a week and a half. The results came in for that. And it was shocking to say the least. Um, so let me bring up uh, my blood work for that. <laughs> um, I was not expecting, I was not expecting this because the, the thing that we like kind of know that's relatively um, consistent is like GH serum numbers are, are pretty, 
pretty kind of standard across the board, you know. Um, when you do when you do like 10 IUs, when you do the whole needle in the delt, 10 IU shot, and you wait two and a half hours and you go get blood work done to test out your growth hormone, usually it'll come back at like a 25 to a 30, something like that, you know? And that's when you're like, okay, my growth hormone's good, awesome. Um, which I personally have seen doing 20 IUs in the delt, one shot, going in and getting back a 55 on my growth hormone serum test using pharmacy growth hormone, whether it was genotropin or serostim. So we kind of know that 10 IUs is going to give us a result of about 25 to 30 um, nanograms per deciliter on, or is it that nanograms per milliliter? What is it? I don't know. It's gonna give us a, a it's gonna, 10 is gonna give us a 25 to 30, 20 is gonna give us a, a 50 to a 60, and so on. So I'm gonna bring up what 60, uh, uh, what, what, 16 IUs of Ingenla gave us. So this is, this is my blood work on what was supposed to be 16, yeah, nanograms per milliliter. 16 IUs, the equivalent of 16 IUs of genotropin a day. Now this, this growth hormone test, this was pulled 30 hours after my last injection 30 hours not this was not this was not an in delt two and a half hour test later this was 30 hours after my last pen 155 nanograms per milliliter and my insulin my fasting insulin is still coming back in the single digits I'm not experiencing any signs of uh, insulin resistance. If I was, my number one, my, my blood glucose would be climbing, which I test that every single morning. It's never been over 100. Uh, my, uh, and this number would be, would be climbing. This number would be absolutely double digits if something was going on with regards to fasting insulin, with regards to insulin resistance. This number hasn't budged. Um, when I was com when I was completely off, when I was completely off all of it, because re remember, like I was, I wasn't even taking serostim before this. I was like four months off of all growth hormone, and then I started the one pen of Ingenla. And even on the one pen, like it was, it it, it came back at a five point four or something like that. Um, so even on that, like there was nothing there. This, I was expecting it to be maybe like a seven, eight, nine, 12, maybe, but still it was in, it was a five still. So it was like, okay, insulin resistance is not, is not setting in yet. Um, and I'm doing a, a shitload of this, but I came back at a 155, a 155, 30 hours after injection. Now 155, if we go back to what I was talking about earlier, where it's like, okay, if we know that 10 I use two and a half hours later, will typically get us like a 25 to a 30. What the fuck is going on here in, in this result? <laughs> like usually we don't see numbers like this unless you are IV growth hormone and test it like immediately after. Like that's how high this fucking number is. So like a 155, a 155, if you divide that by, if you divide that by 25, that comes back at a 6.2. You take 6.2 times 10, that's 62 I use per day equivalent. <laughs> or, 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 yeah, it was 60, it's 60 I use the day before that I injected, you know? That's a lot. Like that's what that growth hormone serum test kind of comes out to is like 60 IUs showing up on there. That's insane. Now, the pen is 90 IUs of Ingenla, but it's supposed to be equivalent 
to like 32 IUs of genotropin if you do the 2.77 conversion. It's, it, it's not even close to that. According to this, it's not even fucking close. Steve says two IUs gives about 100 nanograms per milliliter. If you check it five minutes after the IV. So with 155, it's basically three IUs. Uh, wait, what's he? I can't see it. The heart's in the way. Gives you three IUs in your bloodstream IV at all times. Yeah, it's insane, dude. It's, it's insane. Um, and, and in this last two weeks, so I've been doing, I've, I've been doing the pen every other day for the last two weeks. So that result is, is 1.5 or is, is 1.5 weeks there. Um, that's got that, that comes to, if, if everything works out that way, I'm, I just got another blood test done on Friday. Um, to see if it's going to come out the same. Um, and then I'm doing another blood test this Friday and I'm, I've backed off the dose. I've backed off the dose to do a third of a pen every day. Now, if, if all of this works out the way that I think it's going to. So if, if this result of doing a pen every other day, is equivalent to uh, like that's a result of 60 IUs a day. Yeah. So okay. So what I was saying earlier is I'm I backed off to have half a milliliter every day now. Okay. So that's one third of a pen. One third of a pen. I'm expecting that to be equivalent to about 20 IUs. If, if that comes back with a result on this coming Friday, if doing a third of a pen daily gives us an HGH serum result of about a 50, then I would confidently be able to say that one full pen is equivalent to 60 IUs of genotropin. Okay, so if you've got, if you inject a third, which should be 20 and you get a GH serum score of 50 back. That's, that's like where, where I'm at with this is if, if that, if that happens, if that comes back, I'm going to say the 90 IU pen is actually equivalent to 60 IUs of genotropin, not, not 32 IUs according to the 2.77. Like it just doesn't work out that way. And in this last, and in this last week and a half, my weight has shot up from about 244, 245 to 255 pounds. And it was a, a pretty drastic, a pretty quick jump to it. Like it definitely, it definitely feels like I was thinking like, I, I, I'm like, okay, this feels like I'm on 16 to 20 IUs of growth a day. Like that's, that's what I was experiencing. Because the other weird thing is like, I have zero negative side effects from this. I don't have any sort of like ankle edema. I, I don't even have any carpal tunnel syndrome. So I was like, when I saw this number, this 155, when I saw this number come back, I was like, how could it be that I'm taking the equivalent of like 60 IUs and I have no CTS, I have no ankle edema. So that's why I'm kind of like, is it, is it really like 60 IUs? per pen or like what's going on with this like be, is it because it spreads it out in the entire day does that change things i don't know it, it's but the thing like so dc 81 says some must be built up from the the days before it it is but still it's it's exactly like you know at the end of the day a week is a week you know, at the end of the day, whatever you inject in a week is what you inject in a week, whether it's one time or multiple times, you know, like it's going to it's going to even out and, and, and it's going to level off at some point where, you know, and, and this test was after a week and a half of doing it every other day, you know, so it's like, 
whether I whether I spread that three and a half pens out across the entire week or I took all three and a half pens at the start of the week, like what again again, like uh Rakusa says there's a half-life buildup of five times the half-life. Again, it's exactly like doing testosterone though. It's like there's no difference from doing in a in a week's time period, if you inject a thousand tests one time a week, or you spread that a thousand tests out into four shots of 250. Either way, in a week is in a week. Either way, across a month, you're still injecting the exact same milligrams, you know? Either way, whether I do 3.5 pens every Monday, or I spread them out in a week and do that for a month, you know, it's like, either way, I'm doing 14 pens a month, <laughs> you know? It doesn't change the fact that you're still doing 14 pens a month. Whether you do it 3.5 every other day, or 3.5 four times in a month, you know? So it's just, it, it, there's some, there's definitely something strange going on with it. But like, like I was saying, my result in this last uh, three, three weeks, three and a half, four weeks of doing this, my weight has shot up from about 237, 240 pounds up to 255. Um, I took some, uh, I took, I have pictures of before I started it and uh, where I was yesterday. So let me bring those up now so you guys can kind of see what that actually looks like um, in the real world. So here we are. Um, this is 237 pounds. This is 255 pounds. I literally, like this is rolling out of bed yesterday morning and, and and snapping a picture. I looked at this picture to be like, okay, I wanna, I wanna stand exactly the way that I'm, I am in this one. So like I tried to keep my arm down. I tried to stand exactly the same way. Now you can see there is definitely a lot more vascularity going on. There's definitely a lot more roundness and fullness to everything. You can see my waist is a little bit wider through here. Um, I will say that I have felt like, if I was gonna say that there's a negative side effect, I would say that I have felt more bloated in my midsection. Absolutely, I have felt that. Um, but, I mean, I've, I've been fucking, fucking swole everywhere else. Um, you can see there is a little bit of water that is in my face versus here. Um, but again, it's kind of like, you know, when you gain 20 pounds, your face is gonna hold a little bit more fluid, you know? Like your face is gonna be a little bit bigger when you're 20 pounds heavier. Um, and then if you just kind of like look at the texture of my skin, like everything, it just looks, it looks harder throughout. Like, and, and, I mean, I've I've definitely noticed that it is. Uh, I mean, thing, things are thickening, are thickening in in another way. So yeah, like this is this is the result of three and a half to four weeks of doing one pen the first week, two pens the second week, and then basically three and a half pens the third and fourth week. Uh, taking me from 237, which was on no growth hormone at all. There was no growth hormone on this look at all. And and I do say um, in my uh, in my comment section down here, I do prefer this look. When it comes to straight up bodybuilding, like I can't imagine how things would go if I stayed on this dose and just let let shit fucking ride. Like I can't imagine. Cause like thing, I feel like things are morphing on the, like we're having another morph going on if I just let it go and let the shit ride, you know? Personally, I'm going to go back to this look. Personally, this, this is where I'm gonna start heading um, after I do this next blood test. Um, 
So like I said, I'm doing ha uh, 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 half a milliliter, which is a third of a pen daily. I'm gonna do that up until Friday. And then once I, I get to Friday and do my blood work, I'm gonna drop the growth hormone. I'm not gonna switch to Serostim. Um, and I'm gonna start dropping back down because I do prefer this leaner, I mean, it's not that it's leaner, you know, it's like these, this is this, <laughs> technically this is leaner than this, but I did feel a lot better on this. Like my blood pressure, my blood pressure here is, is quite low. My blood pressure here, like I'm back to like 120 to 125 over 80 to 85 with this look. My resting heart rate here was 53. 52 was the lowest that I saw it here at, at 237 pounds. My resting heart rate here, it's like 68, 69. Last night we went to a wedding. I ate a whole bunch of bullshit <laughs> last night. My resting heart rate last night was a fucking 76. Like that's bad. <laughs> so not happy about that but on on nights where it's like you know normal diet normal circumstances my resting heart rate right now which is here this look is like 68 69 sitting around there um i'm gonna go back to this and we're going to kind of continue dieting continue cutting down from this look um because i i just feel better there like i i, I felt so much more healthy. I felt so much more athletic. Um, and, and, and personally, I just, I just, I feel like this is definitely a better look for business. <laughs> this is definitely, this is definitely a look for bodybuilding. Absolutely. If you want to be, if you want to be straight up hundred percent going for pro bodybuilding, then stay on the growth hormone and keep pushing. Um, but that's not, that's not, that's not what I'm doing. Uh, that's not my game plan. Um, so what can I say uh, about uh, the Genla so far is that it is legit. It does work extremely well. I did take the, the amount of money that it would cost to do a pen every other day like I was doing considering like say if you bought it in bulk you could get like a pen for $185 something like that <laughs> so you take that and you multiply that by 3.5 like it's not cheap to do what I did I mean it's 600 it basically $650 to do what I did in a week for that now a box of Serostim a box of Serostim to run a box, it's gonna not cost that much different. And, and if things line up the way that I was looking at it, because like doing, doing a vial of Serostim a day, you know, that's gonna cost a person, depending on who you know, depending on bulk offers, things like that, it could run you anywhere from 400 to $600 for a box and a box is gonna last you a week if you do 18 IUs a day. And you're gonna get a GH serum level back that's like a 50 when you're doing that. Versus spending $650, so spending, you know, maybe 50 to $100 more and getting back a growth hormone serum test of 155 that is supposed to be constant not spikes and drops and as long as you are paying attention to your fasting insulin and your blood glucose numbers like as long as you are paying attention to that like it, it's super fucking cheap to get a fasting insulin test done you know like go to go to our sponsor algodx.ai <laughs> use code chase and you can get 10% off an insulin test. As long as you're paying attention to that, like, it's not like you're gonna go, like clearly you're not gonna go from, you know, having great insulin sensitivity to fucked up because I've tested it. <laughs> I've tested it. You're not gonna go diabetic in two weeks, a month, 
it's not gonna happen. As long as you're living the bodybuilding lifestyle and not eating like a fat idiot, you know? But, um, I mean, let me, let me bring it up. Um, the insulin, this is Algo DX, by the way, guys. Um, amazing prices that we have uh, on, on this website. Absolutely amazing prices. Also, something, something worth um, noting, fructosamine. This blood test, guys, this blood test, this is a great blood test. This is basically hemoglobin A1C, but for the past two to three weeks, not the past three months. How fucking good is that? I hate the hemoglobin A1C test because like our diets change so quickly. Who gives a fuck what we were eating three months ago? I want to know what my shit's doing now. Fructosamine is going to give you your average blood glucose levels over the past two to three weeks, not past three months. This is a great, 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 great test for bodybuilding. Fructosamine, write that down. Get that. $14. Amazing. Um, all right. So fasting insulin, $14.25 to check your fasting insulin. So as long as you're like paying attention to that, as long as you're checking that, like you're not you don't have to worry about fucking going diabetic on it because that's going to be the thing that starts getting ramped up if things aren't going right. And if, if you start to see that climb, all you got to do is stop. All you got to do is stop. You stop and you start dieting, you back off and your insulin sensitivity comes right back. It's that, it, that, that's, that's the, like, that was the major fear of people using this. People were like, well, if your, your HGH is elevated all the time, that's like taking MK677, right? And we all we all know what happens with MK677. Like you, you, you're, you fuck up your blood glucose. So it's gotta be the same, right? I mean, I didn't see that. I haven't seen that. We're going to see what my blood work looks like from Friday. We're going to see blood work next Friday. I'm, I, I have to say, I, I am, I'm happy with uh, the results from this product. Um, I'm amazed by the blood work. I don't know. I, like I said, I'm, it, it's just, it's so confusing because like, this is a product that's supposed to be like spreading out the exact same number across a week. And yet the number is peaking so fucking high, you know, like that number that like that, that, that number was only supposed to be like a 50. And, but even then it would be like, if it's a 50, then it's, it's a 50, 24, seven, like this is a 155, a 155, 24 seven, like what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, that's insane. That's an insane number. So it's going to be really cool if I get this blood work Friday doing a third of a pen. That means a full pen is actually equivalent to 60 IU. So a 90 IU pen, a 72 IU pen, which actually has 90 IUs in it is equivalent to 60 IUs. That's not bad. That's not bad for pricing. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty good. Um, 60, 60 I use for, uh, you know, say, say you buy it in bulk, $185. Um, I mean, that's three, that's, that's $3 per IU for pharmacy growth hormone. Like that's a really good deal. That's a pretty, pretty good deal. Okay. So hopefully, hopefully that number will come back and match up to be like, okay, this is the equivalent. A third of a pen is 20 IUs basically, because if that's real, I mean, if, if that's real, I mean, that means like if I did the equivalent of, uh, of, you know, a vial of Saristim a day, like in a week, that's $430. If you wanted to do, if you wanted to do the equivalent of vial of Saristim a day, it's four hundred and thirty dollars. Versus, you know, most of you are going to pay six hundred dollars for a Saristim kit. So it's like 
this is this is gonna be a pretty good option. And that's for the small pens. Keep that in mind, guys. That's for the small pens. There's another pen bigger that per IU is gonna be less. And it's gonna have, it still has 1.5 milliliters in it. So you're getting, it's, a, <laughs> it's going to end up being a good deal. Um, so yeah, review. All signs point to this shit is good. Yeah, it, it's pretty. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Um, so, I'm. I'm. I'm uh, it's kind of exciting. <laughs> kind. Kind of exciting for the community. Um, the thing. The thing about it though is, just treat it. Treat it like regular growth hormone. Either take it daily or every other day. Don't try to take it one time a week. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bother with that. Um, I wouldn't bother with that. It, it just, cause there, it probably has a lot to do. It probably has a lot to do with like how lean someone is too, you know? Cause it's like, if, if you don't have a whole lot of fat, it's probably going to absorb a lot quicker. That's, that's probably a big part of it. Um, but yeah, I, I would just, I would dose it daily or every other day and, and, uh, keep in mind that 1.5 IUs of Genla is likely going to be equivalent to one IU of Genotropin. Um, it's much better than what we thought, but I'm going to, I'm going to say it's probably going to be pretty close to that. Um, and we'll confirm that this next Friday. Um, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it, like I said, like 155. The thing that makes me so confident about that is that was 30 hours after injection, like 30 hours. That's insane. I don't know. If you're interested in finding this product, join my Discord, join my membership. You need to be on the uh, you need to be on the email membership. If you want to join that, the the uh, check the description box down below. You can figure out the link there where to join my membership and get in the Discord. You need to be on the email membership. Depending on what YouTube wants to charge for that, it's going to be between twenty five and thirty dollars per month to get into that, and you can get in the Discord and hear about all of this before I make a video on it. I've uh, I've been posting all of this, talking about all of this as it's kind of been happening um, in Discord. So if you are in there, you kind of get the first look, early access to what's going on and all the sources that I use are in there. So if you're interested in that, get in there. Um, the Discord is completely private. If you are not a member, you cannot get in. So keep that in mind. It's a complete waste of time to have a link to the Discord. If you are not a member, you won't be able to see anything. Once you get into the Discord, you have to connect your YouTube account that is a member and sync it to your Discord account. And that will open up all the channels and allow you to see everything. There we go. That's, uh, that's the review. That's all that. That's, that's, how, uh, that's how it is.